Hello, welcome to PC Jack. For years we begged, but now Nokia have finally answered. Introducing the NHU-12A, finally in all Chromax black. Let's see if it was worth the wait. So, while Noctua is already highly renowned for their high-performing air coolers at varying price points and hardware compatibility, it's no secret that they are also infamous for some of the most ugliest products on the market. While this has been the case previously, over the last few years, Noctua have begun to transition their existing products into their Chromax lineup of coolers, including the NHL9A or even the NHD15. So, in an effort to further expand the Chromax lineup, Noctua has finally launched the NHU12A Chromax Black. Additionally, this launch also marks the arrival of the highly demanded NFA12 by 25 120mm fan, which the NHU12A comes with two out of the box for a dual fan setup. For today's video, I'll be focusing exclusively on the NHU12A itself, but I will be doing a follow-up video where I look at the NFA12 by 25 fan on its own and how it would be used as a case fan or for a radiator. So besides Noctua giving the NHU12A a paint job, the actual specs of the NHU12A remain largely the same. The NHU12A is compatible with various Intel sockets including LGA1700 and 1200, as well as AMD sockets like AM4 or AM3. The cooler comes in at 1220 grams in weight, 158mm in height, and 125mm in width with the two fans installed. The cooler has a copper base plate with seven heat pipes soldered directly to the aluminium fin array. Inside the box, you get a box of accessories which includes AMD and Intel mounting hardware, as well as manuals for installing on both platforms. And you also get an included screwdriver. Inside the box, you also get a tube of NTH1 thermal paste, a Y splitter, low noise adapters, and also an included Noctua badge. And finally, the cooler itself. The cooler uses Noctua's tried and true SecuFirm 2 mounting system, which is highly regarded for its ease of installation. And the NHU12A is no exception. All in all, it takes about 5 minutes to get the cooler installed, and the instruction manual does a great job of helping you out along the way with clear, concise diagrams to let you know what you're doing. I'll also be uploading a dedicated installation tutorial for the NHU12A, so make sure you subscribe for when that goes live. If you're looking to customise your NHU12A though, you can also get the NHC7 or C8 heatsink covers, which are sold separately, but they are really straightforward to install and give a nice clean look to the NHU12A. So with the NHU12A and its larger heatsink design compared to a regular 120mm cooler, this unit offers higher performance with CPUs that have a firmly demanding output and can even be comparable to a 240 or 280mm radiator. For today's testing, I thought I'd take a look at how the NHU12A can keep a Ryzen 5 5600X in check with an all-core overclock of 4.8GHz at 1.325V, which gives us a roughly 115W load to dissipate. And I've also tested this with the fans at 50% and 100% in order for us to see if there's any difference between the two RPM ranges. Starting out with 50% fan speed, we can see a maximum of 71.1C while averaging 69.7C, which is impressive, but even more so due to the fact that the fans are barely audible at an average sound level of 36.2 dBA. It's worth noting though, that while I've tested in an open air configuration, using this in a case at a similar fan RPM should offer near silent operation. Moving up to 100% fan speed though, our maximum temperature drops down to 66.6C while averaging 66C, so a roughly 5 degrees C decrease. However, this does come at the cost of noise levels as maxing out our fan speed increased the sound levels to 48.8 dBA. However, given the performance with 50% fan speed, there's very little need for pushing the fans to absolute limits. As a reference though, here's a quick sound test between the two. So, what are my overall thoughts on the NHU12A Chrome Max Black? Well, honestly, I'm really impressed with how well this cooler can keep an all-core overclock on a Ryzen 5 5600X in check, without hitting any thermal limits and also being inaudible at 50% speed. This shouldn't come as a surprise though, as with two NFA12s, the static pressure these fans can offer is extremely useful when trying to push through the heatsink itself. So even though in today's testing I've only used a 6-core 65W TDP chip, I'm confident that the NHU12A would have no problems with more demanding processors like the 5800X or even the 5900X. 
Now, as of the time of filming, the original NHU-12E comes in at £89, whereas the Chromax version is up at £105, which, when you look at how much you can get the NHD-15 for at £89, does make you wonder whether you should go for the better performing cooler at a cheaper price. However, while the NHD-15 will outperform the NHU-12A, a lot of people might not want to have a dual heatsink cooler in their system, as it can obstruct a lot of the rest of the components. But, the NHU-12A will occupy significantly less space and also offer better compatibility for things like your PCIe slots or your memory slots, and still offer excellent performance nonetheless. Maybe I should do a follow-up video where I directly compare the two to see what sort of temperature changes we can see, but let me know if that'd be something you'd like to see. Overall, I really have to hand it to Noctua on this one, and the test results show why Noctua are still the undisputed champions of CPU air cooling. Hopefully, with the addition of the NHU-12A, we'll start to see even more coolers transition into the Chromax Black lineup. But, should it really have taken this long? So, that's it for today's video. Thanks to Noctua for sending this one out for me to show you guys, but let me know what you think of the NHU-12A down in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, then please feel free to like and subscribe for more videos on the way soon. Thank you, and I'll see you next time.